Story 1. Preface, all names used herein are altered. The grass isn't always greener on the other side. Sometimes the green you see is actually the sewage caking up in the distance. I met my ex-husband Dave six years ago in college. We were both 22 and to say the sparks flew immediately would be an understatement. Within two years of dating, he asked me to marry him and I said yes. Dave is a smart, funny and extremely creative man. He majored in digital animation, and aspired to be in his own words the digital Walt Disney. He had a way of explaining the worlds he created and the characters in his mind with such detail that it left you with wonder. He had a singular focus to find a work in his profession after we graduated, but getting into show business in and of itself is hard, let alone animation. A fact that we'd find out soon in married life. We uprooted from our home state of Washington and went south to California to be closer to Hollywood. I studied education, and became a school teacher, he took on odd jobs and freelance animation projects to try and get his foot in the door with any of the big animation studios. For the first couple years I accepted that as was how it was trying to break into the biz. But over time my optimism turned to pessimism. Los Angeles is not cheap, and getting by on a teacher's salary and what he made from the few gigs he'd get wasn't going to be sustainable long term. I started to get impatient with his lack of progress. My impatience soon devolved into resentment, and it trickled down into every aspect of our marriage. Three years it continued like this. Just when it looked like he might catch his big break, nothing happened. Yet he'd plead with me that he had to stick to his plan. That his hard work would pay off. I could see it with all of the bills we were barely keeping at bay. During this stretch, our relationship started to fall off. And when I say fall off I mean more like tumble off of the edge of a bottomless chasm. Dave's dream was becoming my nightmare, and I just couldn't stand being around him at times. Every waking moment he'd be working on his what I called stupid projects. Yes, we went and had dates. We met friends we'd hang out with. But Dave's failure to launch his career in animation was taking a toll on me. I decided I'd take my frustration out by hitting the gym, and hit I did. Between 2018 to 2019, I was in the gym religiously when not working. That's where I met Kevin. Kevin is an LA native. A Cali boy through and through. When I started I wasn't in completely bad shape, which is why I think Kevin took an interest in me. It initially started with some idle banter, as it always does. As I made progress in my gains, his attention became more focused. I knew what he was up to, but I didn't stop it from happening. I was so dissatisfied with my life with Dave that I welcomed Kevin's attention. Dave took a notice to how my body was changing and was deeply appreciative of it. But I had stopped reciprocating that affection. I started to look at his with utter disdain, and in hindsight I knew he didn't deserve that from me. I denied him affection and intimacy, which was a horrible, disgusting thing to do to him. But it wouldn't be the last. As the months progressed things between Kevin and I picked up. Pretty soon I was going to see him outside of the gym. We were going on full-on dates. I would lie to Dave telling him I was going to hang out with friends from work, but instead I would go spend evenings at Kevin's place. And yes, those evening would be spent doing more than just watching TV and trading workout tips. Dave was in no way cognizant of my cheating, though he was well aware that I was unhappy with how things were going between us. But he toiled away trying to make me happy doing everything he could to try and fix us. And I gave gave him nothing but indifference. When I told Dave I wanted a divorce in August 2019, it hit him like a truck. I told him that I could no longer wait for his dream to come true. I wanted to start a family, and that where we were financially, emotionally and mentally I would never have that with him. He begged and pleaded for me not to do it. He kept asking me why and how could I do this to him. A part of me did feel bad because I knew I was leaving him for Kevin, but I believed in my heart this is what I needed. We were still in our mid-twenties. He could bounce back from this. We just weren't meant to be. Those were the excuses I told myself. As we lived in California, I decided I wasn't going to destroy him in the divorce. All I asked for was half of what I had brought into the marriage. We were living in a one-bedroom apartment with no real assets to our name so there wouldn't be much to get in the first place. Meanwhile he, our friends and our families had no clue about Kevin. Kevin however did know I was married, and on the rocks. 
It was he himself that convinced me to leave Dave for him. By November 2019, I was divorced from Dave, and slowly inched my way to being with Kevin full time. By the time the pandemic hit California full stop, I'd realized how much of a horrible choice that was. Hanging out with Kevin and living with him were two completely different things. I won't got into detail, but it dawned on me how much I truly missed the things Dave would do that Kevin didn't. Like the little doodles Dave would draw on post-its and leave in spots he knew I would find. Or how he'd always bring me food when I was grading papers. It's all of the little things that started to build up. I also came to the realization that in terms of the says, newer isn't necessarily better. There were things that Dave knew about me sexually that Kevin never even bothered trying to learn. We we pair off, that's exactly it, we pair off. There was never any love making. Never any tender moments spent together. And now I was quarantined with him. The first couple months I told myself this was right. But by June 2020, the revelation that ducked up royally began to sink in. But this was around the time that I'd also let the cat out of the bag that I'd moved into a new relationship to everyone. As you'd expect, Dave was crushed. He sent me a long email talking about how he was deeply hurt by the idea that I'd moved on in just six or so months, but ultimately he just wanted me to be happy. I wanted so much to come clean to him about everything then and there, but I knew I couldn't. I'd cheated on him for months, lied to him and left him for another man essentially. I couldn't bring myself to doing that to him. But it tore my soul apart reading his words, knowing now that my own selfishness cost me this beautiful soul. All because I couldn't just sit down, shut up and wait for his plan to come into fruition. Fate it seems isn't without a sense of irony though, as just a couple months after that email, I'd come to find out Dave had partnered up with two other freelancers he'd worked with on past projects to start their own studio. With the mass exodus from Los Angeles, finding office space for the study wasn't hard at all, and they could still work from home if they wanted. I also found out through a mutual friend in his field that they'd put out their first project that was going viral on the internet. Finding this out made me feel like utter crap. Here I was believing me leaving him for Kevin was setting me free, when it was the opposite. He was the one set free from a selfish, demanding be of a wife. Kevin and I ended up splitting almost a year to the day that I told Dave I wanted a divorce, August 2020. The whirlwind romance we had ended with a small breeze. Months of being with each other showed that we were good as duck buddies, but not as a couple. I ended up moving into my own place a month later. And that's where I've been ever since. Watching as Dave pieces his life back together and mourning the life I willingly ended. I've looked at his art station profile often, and it's once of his shares from today that really gutted me. The title of the piece was My Muse, and it was a fully rendered illustration of a female's portrait. Highly detailed with a watermark labeled for Cassandra 21. That's what he used to call me when he'd do portraits of me, his muse. Whoever Cassandra is, she's clearly picked up all of the pieces of Dave I left broken. I click on one of the tags, and lo and behold, she's also a digital artist and just as talented as Dave is. So not only in my absence did he find the focus to start his own studio, but he's found a woman that shares in his creative nature more than I ever possibly could. I will take the regret I feel for hurting Dave, and walking away from him to my grave. Seeing that drawing prompted me to make this post after lurking this sub anonymously for months. How could I have been so stupid, stubborn and blind? I don't know if there's even anything to gain posting this. I can never have him back. And even if he hadn't moved on I could he'd never take me back if he found out the truth. I just hurt so much, and I miss him. I chose to leave him for what I thought was the better option, when there was never any comparison after the fact. My own selfish needs cost me the love of my life. And I'm left to reflect and learn from this. And I will. I'm well aware hitting post I'm opening myself up to be crucified. It's not any worse than what I already put myself through every day. I've been going to therapy the last couple months to try and cope with my feelings overall, but this one? This one bites like a snake. He was my friend, my hero and my first real love. But I allowed my own insecurities on what I believed marriage should be drive me away from him into the bed of another man who turned out being nowhere close to the man Dave was. And now I fear I'll never find a love like that every again. I just needed somewhere to get this off my chest. TLDR 
came to the realization today that I made a monumental mistake divorcing my ex-husband. Cheated on him for months and left him for the man I had the affair with, only to be no longer with him a year later. I missed my ex deeply, but he's moved on and I've lost him forever. Feeling lost, lonely and worthless. I am the absolute worst. I hate myself. I hate my life. But Dave's failure to launch his career in animation was taking a toll on me. When I told Dave I wanted a divorce in August 2019, it hit him like a truck. I told him that I could no longer wait for his dream to come true. One recommendation I can make that you seem to not even be aware of is your romantic interests are 100% aligned with a person's personal success. If Dave was very successful, you'd have never left him in the first place. Your entire experience is one where your devotion is tied to income and success potential. Until that changes, you've learned nothing. My bet is that the universe is not done with you yet. I had a customer who monkey branched to her boss. He was outwardly everything she wanted. Meanwhile she failed to see that her poor BH reluctantly moved on. Life for about a year was May. Boss was not nearly as charming 24-7 as he was around the lunchroom. Eventually, the affair petered out. She had heard that her ex moved on. She was too embarrassed by her stupidity and utter childishness. A few years later, she was out shopping. She had been on her own since the affair ended. She recognized her ex leaving a building down the street. She realized that his parents lived on that street. She felt like running up to him, then she saw him lifting a baby carrier, and a pretty woman exit holding a mommy bag. Her stomach crashed through her knees, when she heard her ex call the child Amanda. It was the name that he had said he wanted to name their first child. She felt nauseous, as she got to see the life that she flushed down the toilet all those years ago. She spent the next week getting crap face drunk, crying to her girlfriends, and cursing herself. I love hearing stories like this. Not to speak bad about WS's but some people deserve this just like OP they need to face the consequences of their actions in the harshest way possible and the BS deserves the best the world can give. Of course my hope is that all WS's after facing the consequences change for the better and never become what they were and instead become better. God this really hits home for me too. Living on my own really showed me all the little things that I took for granted or refused to notice. It's terrible not being able to even thank your BS for it, but it sounds like he is moving on with someone he clicks with, and I am glad you are not trying to get back into his life. Best of luck as you heal. From all these deleted comments I figure people are being extra mean. Why can't people get that the people posting here are people who want to change? Who want to become better? Yes I also think OP got what she deserves but she wants to change and hopefully will. Posting insulting things don't help at all. As I always say if people are angry at WS's go to our slash adultery and insult those AH people here are actually remorseful they are not. Go and insult them instead of people who want to become better. Worldwide comments of the day. According to my dad, an old, and I mean very old, ex said she can give him a more handsome baby. I didn't love you then, but I love you now? What? La 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 la. Oh no 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 no, that was funny. You know when you break up, we'll never talk again. Boy, bye. Click. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe for more interesting and relatable Reddit videos.